Hello, today I'm going to talk about engineering combustion echo reactors. At first, I'm going to talk about physics and tools to numerically solve our combustion problems. Then I'm going to talk about uh, the combustion of the hydrogen and methane and compare them. And then I'm going to talk about the flow of, um, of combustion in multiple reactors with the example of dihydrogen combustion. We define a combustion as a chemical reaction that has a component that is composed of carbon, uh, hydrogen and oxygen. And another thing, in French we call the left one carburant and in the right part we call it the comburant. In English the left part is called the fuel and I didn't find any uh, proper translation for comburant. So, I don't know. Uh, you might ask, what is the 3.76? Uh, uh, it's actually the ratio uh, of dinitrogen in air divided by the ratio of dioxygen. So, 79 over 21, uh, because air is composed of 71% of dinitrogen and 21% uh, 21, 21 of uh, dioxygen uh, so you by dividing uh, well if you multiply this by 21 and divide it again by uh, 100 you you get uh, air so this is strictly equivalent to air just that uh, in front you put a one because that that what will intervene in the reaction of combustion in this reaction uh, as a side note I'll have to add that uh, dinitrogen can intervene in uh, some process but not on, uh, uh, not on uh, the dihydrogen combustion. Obviously, uh, this reaction is correct. Uh, there is nothing special. Um, let's talk about dihydrogen. So it's easy. You just plug in H2 in the previous reaction, you solve, and then boom, you get this. Um, we will work with this at equilibrium, and you might think, wow, this is super easy. But in fact, there are nine species in the, mechanic, uh, the mechanism. So nine species that are inside the subprocess, the, elemental, the elementary reactions. And there are 21 of those elementary reactions, which is a lot, um, and that you can't study um, with a paper, which is why we are going to use um, a tool. And um, we define the equivalence ratio as a variable used for combustion physics. That is um, the, the uh, quantity of matter of carbon, of, uh, of carbon, of uh, fuel, so carburant, divided by the quantity uh, of matter of comburant divided by the same thing but in stoichiometrical uh, in stoichiometric reaction so by simplifying in our example we get this that is easily simplifying by this thing um, so what i call car is carburant which means fuel which means fuel uh, comburant uh, that means comburant i explained it earlier um, you can know that if uh, phi is inferior to one you have air in excels it's easy just multiply by uh, and O2 in uh, both in in both sides of the inequality. Uh, same for uh, phi superior to one, you have fuel in excess, and with phi equal to one, you are in stoichiometric reaction, which is normal. Um, let's talk about the temp temperature of the flame, uh, which mean which means um, the temperature of equilibrium in a combustion. So uh, it's a uh, it's just a result of the enthalpy balance. So it's not really hard to get or anything. Uh, just that um, it's interesting to know that uh, depending on the fuel and the comburant, you get different, different uh, temperature of the flame. Um, so you know that with uh, dioxygen, you get a really high temperature of flame. And with air, you get a way lower one. And it's really rare to work with dihydrogen and oxygen, uh, dioxygen directly. You, you often work with air. So you often consider this one and not the uh, 
uh, the lower one. Um, so what way we call it uh, temperature, uh, flame temperature is because uh, when you do barbecue, uh, you put your coal, you put uh, fire, and the, the temperature will slowly increase until it reaches a maximum. This maximum is the temperature of equilibrium, which is what we call this. And then you had your sausage that you cook and then that you eat. And this is why we call it the plain temperature. Uh, so yeah, that's it for this thingy. So obviously you want to solve numerically these problems because you have lots of um, uh, uh, reaction in the mechanism. So we will use Chemkin Chem Kim Pro, a software developed by ANSYS that num numerically solves uh, chemical problems. So you have to input um, some of some of uh, the files. So like thermodynamic pro thermodynamic pro properties of the components you deal with. So um, here you have each component, and there are a few coefficients that corresponds to the polynomial interpolation of the heat capacity. Uh, if you want to know more about this, uh, it's called the NASA notation. Uh, basically, it, st it, it stores the, the capacity as a function of temperature uh, through a polynomial form. And obviously, there are uh, other da data that are stored, but I'm unsure about them. Uh, now, uh, obviously, you need to mention which components you are working with, which atoms and which pieces. Um, and then it computes all the thermodynamical uh, properties, so like enthalpy, so or like entropy, uh, and heat capacity. Uh, so I computed the temperature of the flame as a function of the equivalence ratio. You can see that with uh, phi is nearly equal to one, you are almost at the maximum temperature. Um, with uh, when you are in um, excess of air, so the left part, this this thingy, you have too much air, and on the right part you have too much fuel, and you can see that it lowers the uh, equilibrium temperature. Um, you can note, oh my God, it's really close. You we have uh, nearly 2,400 uh, Kelvin, but in the previous table we had the flame temperature that was equal to um, uh, uh, 2254 degrees and I don't I have no I have no clue why I think it's because uh, the teacher that that wrote this I forgot to put Kelvin but I, I'm unsure about that so maybe this is wrong but it's uh, it's the same uh, trend that it should follow uh, and uh, I think my thinking is correct because I got uh, from the literature uh, this thingy here so you can see that it peaks at uh, uh, 2000 and a bit um, uh, Kelvin so not uh, Celsius uh, with a, a ratio near one um, so here we find the same curve as the previous one with the, simula the simulated flame and you can see that there are various ways to compute it. I also did it with um, um, calculating on N with a uh, constant CP. So you take uh, the mean value of the CPs over uh, temperature. So I also got this curve and it's pretty easy to do. It, it's, just, it's just math, not, not really hard. So um, something I wrote, I, I read and that made me really angry is on a report, on an exp on a experimental report. I read, I read, but we note that with phi inferior to one, so it's uh, excess of air, we still have O2 that is a pollutant. So you might think that it's uh, that's a typo. It's not possible. Someone might not write that oxygen pollutes. It's not possible. Well, if you if you had read the report, it is. My colleague, 
wrote that uh, O2 is a pollutant and should be limited, uh, that we uh, should not have O2 in the air, which is uh, quite funny and that made it me quite angry. Um, so obviously, a property of the dihydrogen uh, reaction that is here is that it does not pollute, which is why it's interesting for uh, hydrogen motors that are in uh, development these days. So uh, don't don't say that it pollutes. It never pollutes. The mistakes actually f comes from because uh, the the thing we had to do uh, was about stu studying pollution, and I don't know why he wanted absolutely to have a pollutant in this reaction. But no, there is no pollutant in this. Um, so we can visualize it uh, clearly here. So I computed the uh, equilibrium mole fraction uh, as a function of our phi. So in, uh, in this curve here, in uh, pink, is the uh, water, so the production of water. The combustion of dihydrogen produces water, so the closest you are to the stoichiometric reaction the more you produce water, which is obviously no. Um, when you um, when you are in excess of air, so the left part here, you still have O2, but obviously O2 is not a pollutant. You know it now, and you can know that if you sum all of them, you have uh, one, and which is cool because it means you don't have any other thing. Uh, on the right part, so excess of fuel, you have um, H2 that is in excess, which is normal because you are in excess of fuel and you have extra fuel, so it's normal. And if you go uh, uh, outside the stoichiometry, uh, the, the phi equal one um, state, you obviously diminish the proportion of water in your system, which is normal. Okay, so uh, now we are going to talk about the dangers of dihydrogen combustion. So it does not pollute, it does not pollute. However, it's dangerous for another reason, is that it's very exothermic. So it, it produces um, uh, a lot of heat, and which is uh, why it's one of the most uh, exothermic well, it's one of the most exothermic reactions, which is why it's interesting for the motors that are in development right, right now. right now, And it can explode really easily. So uh, be careful. Now we are going to talk about the combustion of methane. Uh, so we plug methane in our combustion equation that we, told, with, that we uh, discussed, about, discussed earlier. So we get about... Um, the the same um, the same uh, equilibrium temperature, so you have a peak with um, a stoichiometric reaction, and the more you um, you are away of this stoichiometric reaction, the less your um, uh, flame temperature is. Uh, once again, you might think, ah, blah blah blah, it's super easy, but there are 53 species in this reaction and uh, 500 elementary reactions, which is a lot. But for a computer, it's easy. It's just clumsy stuff. It's just, uh, it's just differential equations. Now, let's talk about pollution. Wow, this big diagram. It's impossible to understand. Okay, let's zoom in a bit. Uh, so, we are going to focus on O2 first. So if you are in excess of air, it's normal that you have too much air. Okay, no problem. So And then it lowers. Okay, no problem with that. Um, let's talk about H2. So it's uh, this one, this one here. So, yeah, so when you are in, uh, in excess when you are in excess of um, 
of fuel, you have too much fuel, so you have high H2. Uh, then, then um, we have no, we have a little bit of the the uh, a component that is called O, uh, and that intervenes slightly, so you can find small pieces of it in the reaction. Same goes for H, so a proton. You also find it in the reaction, but it's really small and it does not pollute, so who cares? Um, same for alcohol group. You still have a little bit of it uh, that, in, that is in blue. Uh, then you have HO2, so not water. Uh, that does not pollute either, so who cares? Um, then you have H2O2, so oxidized water that does not pollute either and that is a tiny bit here. Um, then you have this curve that is uh, water, so that is produced during the reaction, that is here. Uh, you have CH4 that is produced, uh, no, that is the that is uh, the react that is the fuel sorry because you are com you, it's the combustion of methane so it's normal that when you are in excess of air you are you have high th4 uh, what i said earlier is is wrong if you are if you have a peak here of h2 it's because the combustion is limited so you the, the reaction can't finish and you end up with doing a combustion of h2 here. Uh, but now, let's talk about the pollutants. So you can find the curve of uh, CO2 in black. So obviously CO2 is a pollutant, you need to limit them. Uh, and there is another pollutant that is um, uh, nit nitrogen oxide. So you, it's NO1, so NO. But uh, since all of the NO, so NO2, NO3 are pollutants, we just call them NOx, so it's easier to note. And the curve of NOx is... Uh, the curve of NOx is not here. Uh, but it's a pollutant, and um, I didn't... It's, it's not shown in this graph. But uh, there is a tiny bit that is uh, that is there. Uh, okay, but it, it does produce uh, NOx and CO2. Now we are going to talk about a perfectly stirred uh, reactor. So it's homogeneous. Uh, we input it H2, O2, and N2 uh, with the reaction we discussed earlier. So the combustion of dihydrogen. Tau is the temperature of uh, of stay in the reactor. So we will first uh, study it as a steady state. So uh, by calculating the coefficients, the molar uh, fractions of all the components, using the formulas I gave above as a function of phi, so I did this, it's not, really easy. it's not really hard to do. You just have to replace it with the formulas I gave earlier. Um, so this is the formula, uh, this is the, um, the result given by Kemkin. And this is the graph I computed. So you can see that it's pretty similar. And obviously the, the species are the same. So yeah, great. Now we can quantify the uh, molar fraction as a function of uh, our uh, equivalence ratio. Now let's talk about the transient state with phi equal 1. So we will design a, a um, PSR, yeah, PSR, PSR with the, the conditions at uh, as stoichiometric values, so these ones. And uh, we will compute the, the temperature, so the equilibrium temperature, the flame temperature, in our homogeneous, uh, homogeneous spatially 
and, but not homogeneous uh, temporally, so as a matter of, of time, uh, so in function of time. So you can see that the temperature, uh, that uh, w with a, a starting temperature of uh, 1400K, uh, so Kelvin obviously, uh, you can see that the temperature uh, starts at um, 1400K and diminishes. This is uh, due to the fact uh, that uh, the, the, the combustion does not have, um, does not have enough um, heat to uh, stay. In French, we talk about, uh, the, we say that the flame uh, is entretenu, meaning that once the flame is started, it stays. But here, it does not stay. Because in the first seconds, so, uh, well, not seconds, in the first milliseconds, you have a flame and boom, it stops. So the flame is not, uh, is not kept, it is not entretenu in French. Now, let's uh, study it with uh, 1700K. Now, it's totally different because you have a start starting temperature that diminishes um, and that will um, that will bring heat to the uh, combustion reaction and then it, it it reaches a peak here that is the the peak of the flame but that is not the uh, flame temperature the flame temperature is a temperature at equilibrium so then it diminishes to reach a, a final temperature so this is what would happen if you would do the combustion of dihydrogen in order to do your barbecue obviously don't do this at home if you have a temperature that is too low it will not start like, like this you have a flame and then it stops after uh, 10 to the power minus 5 seconds, so it's uh, it's less than a microsecond, uh, than a millisecond, sorry. Um, while, while here, you have your flame here, and then it keeps. So it this represents the, the oscillating effect of the flame. You can see that sometimes it, it brights, uh, it, it's a phenomenon that acts with flame, so it diminishes and then it increases and then it, reach equi it reaches equilibrium. So uh, that's all for the study in transient state. Now, instead of studying as a matter of time, we will study it as a matter of space. Space. So we will use a plug flow reactor, so PFR in steady state, meaning that it does not, uh, that the, the variables do not depend of, on time. So uh, we have, a, we dimension our plug flow reactor. We had, uh, we had hair plus, um, plus H, 80% uh, um, of H2 plus uh, 20% of N2. Uh, we have a certain speed that is, that is input in the plug flow reactor. And then we determine the temperature. And obviously, I would note that the length is 5 centimeters, which can seem low, but we'll see that it, it is not low. So uh, here we see that the temperature is reached really easily. So you have your cold, you have your cold uh, uh, combustible and comburant, so uh, fuel and comburant, and that uh, that will have a combustion at the start, and almost after the start, you are in a steady state of, uh, in the in the uh, global temperature. So. Uh, here we are a matter of distance, so it means that the the flame will occur here, 
and will not occur here. Here it will just stay as where it is. But, but, um, but here we can see that it's actually a zoomed in uh, graph because the distance in centimeters I divided it by 10. Uh, I did, divided it by 10 and so actually uh, what can seem like a okay scale actually this represents 100 of the, the reactor so this reactor is way too big um, we can also view the uh, combustion so here on this graph we have O2 that diminishes because it's consumed same goes for the dihydrogen and uh, the water is produced so we once again not a matter of time or a matter of space meaning that here is the input flow and then almost after a few uh, millimeters well zero point uh, some millimeters you almost have your uh, steady system uh, so we can just see that the combustion occurs in the first uh, millimeters. So that's all. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked this video. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. Bye.